this has been going around for a little while. This this is this is something I saw uh, last month, and it's been it's been sitting in my reading list for a bit, and I got a chance to to read it. To uh, a little piece by Lauren uh, Martin Check, I believe, is is the the, the person. It's a medium article, um, and she points out something that uh, you know a lot of my liberal friends get upset at me for uh, for, for for going after him, but uh, points out something that Obama did recently on his wife's podcast. Right? I mean, both of them are are kind of responsible for saying. Uh, these statements, but basically the the Obamas uh, were chastising young people for the lack of enthusiasm. Young people are are not as enthusiastic about the Democratic Party, and uh, you know you know the Obamas feel really sh- they they feel like you, the young the kids the kids today with their fucking socialism and their wanting health care. You know, pull your pants up, and maybe then you'll get some health care, huh? How about that? How about how about you you uh, you, you quaff your hair and start working from five for Pfizer, and then you'll get some health care, huh? How about that, you you, you kids huh? out there, the youth in the streets? You, you you're going out there, and the what do you think? Health care grows on trees? You 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 youths, you you get you get out there. And you fucking, you wear a suit, and you put that corporate dick right in your mouth, and you suck hard. You suck on it like it's your favorite flavor of Jolly Ranchers. That's what you do. And then you will get some health care, some sticky, sticky, gooey health care. That's what, aren't you excited? That's, isn't that exciting? Where is the enthusiasm for that? Why are you, why are you not excited? Don't you want to be excited? Isn't that exciting? What a putz. What a putz that guy is. So, um, you know, here's the thing. I get, <laughs> I do, I do get attacked by liberals, uh, for criticizing Obama, uh, um, uh, probably more often than I probably should. And I, and it's always interesting to me is like, the, the Democrats, like, you know, I get, as a progressive and socialist, whatever, I mean, I am, I'm, I'm pretty much, I'm a socialist in terms of, like, what I believe in and stuff, and I think there's really not a fundamental understanding of what that term is in, uh, in the American zeitgeist, but anyway, uh, I, I mean, I get called, like, sensitive and shit. You know, but I, I, I can take criticisms of my work. Like, you know, I, almost every person I've dated has had some kind of critique of what I do. And, and I either have to listen and see if that critique is true and valid. Or if I don't believe that it's true and valid and there is a reason for me to, for, for me to be doing what I'm doing, um, I, know how to, I know how to defend it. I know how to, you know, make heads or tails of what what I'm talking about and why I'm doing what I'm doing. Important important little little thing there is to know why you're doing what you're doing, right? So but but these fucking Democrats, man, is like they don't like they're the ones that are like too sensitive. They're like the they they're the ones that kind of are the reason why I think like the whole like crybaby liberal, like liberal snowflake kind of thing is used as like a negative connotation because they just every time you say something about the democratic party every time you kind of go after their party uh they're the ones that are like they're like but but why but i mean they're but the dem but it's not republicans and it's just like is it though isn't it though isn't it though especially when you criticize the obamas right like the obamas have become this sort of um almost like this cult within the Democratic Party. They've become like these bigger sort of culty figures within the Democratic Party. Um, and it's, it's really weird and creepy, and I kind of hate it. Uh, but, you know, you can't say anything about them because he was the first black president, so everything he did was, was glazed over with this, like, oh, we did it, kumbaya, kind of, like, 
And it's like, yeah, that's, I mean, it's really great that we finally got uh, a black president, you know, in like uh, close to 300 years after this country was made and uh, 40 years after, 40 or 50 years after, you know, the civil rights era. Uh, I mean, in my opinion, fucking too long. But this guy turned out to be like every fucking neoliberal corporate chill. He was basically like a... He basically ruled the country like Reagan. You know? And it was like... He even he even has been quoted to say that if, if this was the 80s, he would have probably voted for Ronald Reagan based on his belief systems. Right? So it's... You know... I'm not... I don't... I never want to try to diminish racial tension in this country because it's real and boy fucking howdy as an Indian person do I know it's real but it it, it, it kind of um, I think it, it, it's been uh, an exploited argument uh, to, to justify a lot of neoliberal policies and class warfare uh, but to liberals the, you know this cult like figure that he's kind of become the, it, it's because they associate him with normalcy in this country, and Lauren Lauren Martinchek points this out in the, in the article. It's it's a it's a return to normalcy. That's so. Anytime he shows up, it's just like oh fuck, it's it's just like when things were amazing. Do you guys remember when things were awesome and we didn't have to like pay attention to anything because the black man was in office and everything he did is probably glittered with black gold and everything's fine and and nothing you can ever do is wrong you guys remember you guys remember when i didn't have to pay attention to anything and i could just watch cat videos and masturbate all day and just oh and that's what they want to go back to you know like it's exhausting to pay attention to politics at 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 that level but that but everything in your life is political and you should be paying attention to to politics on on almost uh, any and every level um and it, I, it's so weird that as I'm saying this statement, uh, the lighting has changed. I'm driving underneath the tunnel and the a person in front of me has their brake lights on and it kind of gives me a, a demonic glow to say that everything is political in your life and you should give a shit. Uh, it's super, kind, of, kind of a weird weird time for the, for the red ominous lightning. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be complacent. Right, I think complacency was normal. Um, not giving a shit and being like, "Bad Democrats are good, Republicans are bad," or vice versa. Is like that's not that's that was normal, and it and it brought us to this point. And we shouldn't be trying to go back to that. At no point should we be trying to go back to something that brought us to a more catastrophic point. It's like when people are like, I'd like to time travel back to high school. I'd do things so differently. And it's like, no, you fucking wouldn't. If that's the source point of all your problems, why go back to the fucking source point? Look, and that is a lesson that I've had to learn the hard way in certain aspects of my life. As a divorced man, I can tell you that going back to the same problem over and over again... And it's, it's not going to get... you got to move forward to so, to do something different and do something better. But the conservatives look at this guy, uh, this 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 Obama cult figure, uh, with visceral hatred. That's They just hate him uh, for everything. He represents this um, anti-American, like, pro-social... And, and I think, you know, I think our rhetoric towards socialism in this country really uh, stemmed from... The the, uh, the the way that racists look at Obama uh, as a socialist. And it's like, that, that guy's not socialist fucking at all. At all, that guy's not socialist. Not even fucking close. Boy, if he was socialist, I would have the enthusiasm that, that he claims I lack. Uh, so... This is why people get mad when people criticize Obama is because it's either normalcy or they or they praise you because you're racist. And it's like, no, I'm criticizing Obama because of his policies, what he stood for, what his beliefs are and how he led the country. And that's that's why. 
he he ta- he talked a big game about hope and change, hope and change, hope and change, and then became the same corporate bullshit president that every other fucking person before him was. And now, and now he's fucking endorsing and shilling for a candidate that's literally said fundamentally nothing will change. Other than them saying some nice things, the Democrats have come out and made a stance by declining Medicare for all from their platform and by putting up a candidate that is boring as fuck, just as immature as Donald Trump, and has literally said fundamentally nothing will change. So it's just, you know, I don't know. I, 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 I find it I find it harder and harder to sit there and justify anything about the Democratic Party like on a daily basis <laughs> at this point. Like these fucking liberals just go after lefties all the time. Anybody that doesn't that doesn't fucking kiss ass to the Democratic Party. And don't get me wrong, I, I actually don't conserve as just as much. The, the, the right wing has done me no favors. And, and boy, howdy, are there plenty of videos where I'm going after the right wing. So this statement was made in Michelle Obama's podcast. He was on the first episode. I don't know how many fucking episodes there are. By the way, can, can politicians stop fucking having podcasts? Like, go, go... Your job as a politician is to legislate is to create legislation on behalf of the people. You're not fucking doing that. Stop making podcast. I'm a comedian. I can make a podcast about whatever I fucking feel like because that's like my job. But you're a fucking politician. Can you can you go legislate? Can you be a legislator? It's because of shit like this is why politicians get a bad name. It's cuz they do these fucking empty gestural things of like I'm going to say some things that sound really smart on a podcast and I'm and I'm you know I'm going to use some big words and arbitrary pauses and it makes it sound like I'm very pensive and that's good that's all I need to do money please like and it's just like fuck off anyway on the Michelle Obama podcast he was the, her her first guest obviously uh they're they're you know, obviously he's going to be the first guest on her on her podcast. And he comes out. Well, she makes some statement. She makes a statement first. This is this is what I read, I, I you know, in, in, in the uh, article here is she makes a statement uh, about how she's excited about what young people are doing around the world, around the country. And, and then she goes on to start making a statement about how cynical we are. And that we care about, we care more about our cereal choices. And it's, which is like, that's not even fucking true anymore. And then Obama goes on to make some statement about how, uh, you know, we've become very cynical about, about government as a, as, as a generation. Um, and, uh, and, and we only point out. Uh, we only point out uh, fallacies in the government when, when things aren't working. And it's like, yeah, fucking no shit, bro. Fucking no shit we're going to point out. Fallacies when things are broken. That's when you point them out. You don't point out things are broken like when everything is fine. My car is running pretty darn good right now. But I'm not, like, bitching about the fact that I got an oil change or had to get the brakes changed six months ago. What a moronic statement to make. And the system is broken. Everybody has a reason to be cynical about the government right now. Everybody everybody should, should be... has the right to have less enthusiasm. I posted something, uh, uh, you know, I, I post my tweets on Instagram uh, and I posted some, I can't even remember exactly what the tweet was, uh, but, boy, I don't know if you guys could hear that or not, but that biker was very loud on his on his bike there. But, you know, I, I basically posted 
something along the lines of like I'm not about about my lack of enthusiasm for this election. And somebody just, you know, replied and just said, you might not be excited, but it's your civic duty to do it. And it's like, yeah, it's my civic duty to also not do it in protest. If I really feel like the two candidates that are, that essentially are cherry picked by the corporations that run our elections are, are not candidates that represent my views, then I don't have to choose any of them. And what sucks is this current election system, the, 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 election system that we are under is a duopoly. Is it, I mean, really, it's a corporate monopoly. It's a corporate oligarchy. But it pretends to be a duopoly. It pretends to have two sides. It's two sides of the same coin, but it pretends to have two sides. Which means even if I wanted to pick somebody different, even, even if these two corporate parties pick their candidates and I don't like them and I want to pick somebody different, I want to pick somebody better, I can't fucking do it. Because there ain't nobody else that can. Because I might live in a state where the Green Party isn't allowed to be on the ballot. I might live in a state where the Libertarians aren't allowed to be on the ballot. Socialists aren't allowed to be on the ballot. So what the fuck am I getting excited over this election system for? There is nothing to get excited about. As, as a first-time voter, as somebody that's waited 23 fucking years to, to have this right, I can, get, I can give a shit about these two candidates. Both of these candidates don't give a shit about any of the things that, that I'm passionate about. They don't care about human rights. They don't care about equality. They don't care about the working class. They are neoliberal and neoconservative shills for the corporation, pumping an econ- uh, uh, p- pumping a war economy, killing people that look like me. I have no interest in voting for either of these fucking people. So you want to talk about cynicism? We have every motherfucking right to be cynical. We have every right to be cynical. There's praise amongst the Democratic Party for squashing the Bernie campaign. Obama led the final blow. They all, uh, all all of the candidates back in March, I don't know if you remember, uh, maybe you do, maybe you don't. uh, Maybe you're one of these people that has the the fucking memory of a gnat because that's where our society now apparently uh, is. We just, we we forget things at like on a a minutely fucking basis because something new and shiny popped up or Trump tweeted something that we have to fucking pay attention to more than like anything else but they all dropped I mean like like within 72 hours every single political candidate dropped and endorsed Joe Biden Kamala Harris fucking uh, what is that skateboard guy from Texas his name O'Rourke Robert O'Rourke yeah, I won't go Beto. Fuck that shit. It's a ploy. Abby Martin talked about how that, uh, she revealed how that's like a ploy to make him more uh, likable to to, to 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 Latinos. Fucking asshole. But uh, Robert O'Rourke endorsed Biden. Pete Buttigieg, Elizabeth Warren, Amy Klobuchar. They all fucking dropped one by one by one. And then once this pandemic hit, once this pandemic started, uh, you know, Tulsi Gabbard, who I was very excited about, she fucking endorsed the guy. She's like, what the fuck? Right. And then and then the final blow of Bernie Sanders. And, you know, Bernie wants to be liked by the Democrats. He does. And I get that there's an argument to be made of like, oh, well, he has to play the game. Well, why is why is something that very much affects our everyday life a game? Why is it being controlled by these fucking sociopaths? Why are genuine people that actually don't look at it as a game being forced to participate in it like it's a fucking game? But, you know, he's been... 
he's been siding with the Democrats and, and kind of giving them a pass and all this other shit, right? And I've been pretty disappointed in it. But Obama was, I mean, the final blow to the head. I mean, he basically came out and he was like, look, if, if it looks like Bernie Sanders is going to run away with it, we are going to fucking stop him. Like, he came out and said that he was going to stop Bernie Sanders. The candidate th- that, that had a large grassroots movement that stood for the people, that young people were actually fucking excited about, I wanted to fucking vote for the guy. I couldn't. Took that chance away from me. And then now he's just turned into a huge disappointment anyway. So, you cast the final blow to one of the most energetic politicians that young people actually wanted to vote for, and then you chastise young people for not being excited about the boring fucking asshole you you have endorsed. I am 100% cynical about electoral politics. I, re- I, re- I really am. I, you know, there's a lot of friends of, of mine that, that don't want me to be, that, that kind of look at it as this is, this is our, 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 you know, the, 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 gl- the glory, the, the, the fucking light at the end of the tunnel is, is the election. And it's like, no, it's not. It, it, it is a tool in the tool belt of, uh, 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 of activism and driving change, yes. Having better candidates, but you uh, having better candidates is important. But also changing the system is important. So I'm jaded and cynical as fuck about the uh, electoral system. What gives me hope is things like the People's Convention, the People's the Movement for a People's Party, folks like you know Nick Brana, uh, and people that are on the ground doing things you know the, <clears throat> the 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 daily protests give me give give me a lot of hope i'm not cynical about that there has been so many protests across this country since the end of may that they're like actually changing shit i'm going to talk about one of those in just a little bit it None, none of this stuff just happens because politicians are like, well, this seems like the right thing to do. They never fucking do that. It happens because there, there's kids on the streets fighting for it. There, there are comedians fucking amplifying that shit. Comedians that are talking about it. Independent journalists that are addressing it, that are getting the stories out there to the people. That's that's what I'm excited about. The strikes, very excited about the strikes. There's there have been tons and tons of labor strikes all across the country since March, and he, I mean even before that. So excited about that shit. It's the resurgence of the labor movement. But once again. You know, this is the stuff that people are excited about. This is the stuff that drives change. It's what give pe- gives people hope. It's what Obama ran on, hope and change. So, for, I mean, for all intents and purposes, this guy should be all on board. This is, this is on brand for the dude. This is on fucking brand for the dude. But he doesn't, right? I mean, o- Obama squashed the NBA strikes. He talked to LeBron. He was like, listen, we got to stop this. Okay. Play some basketball. Play some basketball. That's a very bad Obama impression. I understand. I know that. That's a bad Obama impression. But remember when Laura Ingram did that shit? I don't mention this on Monday, but I want to mention it again. But remember when Laura Ingram did that shit? Shut up and dribble. I believe is what she said. This is Obama's version of that. But no. But but look, liberals are not going to get upset about that shit because. Again, there's a cult-like fandom surrounding Barack Obama, so he can't do anything wrong, ever. 
He's their he is their shining black knight. That's what he is. That's what he all that's what he's always going to be. He doesn't fucking stand for the labor movement. He doesn't stand for 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 equality and for justice. I mean, police brutality was happening underneath his administration. We had a, we had huge demonstrations in Ferguson. Huge demonstrations for Eric Garner. What happened there? Fucking nothing. This guy takes everything that we're excited about and then fucking kills it. He's a, he's the fun killer. He's the fucking fun killer. He kills everything people get excited about and then pushes the status quo. Pushes the same old, same old. And then he gets shitty when we don't like his stupid same old, same old. And we're like, this doesn't work. And he's like, yeah, but it will though. It will if you get really excited about it. And it's like, no. It won't. It never has. We tried it before. And we were excited about it before. Fuck that shit, man. I, we, we, shouldn't be, we shouldn't be holding up these fucking people on a pedestal. And that goes for Bernie and Tulsi, too, by the way. It, it, I don't, and, and, and all the other candidates that we, that we like, adore. Like, these guys are all mascots. That's all they are. They're mascots to an idea at best. At best. Right? Obama was a mascot for hope and change, and then he was just like, nope, I'm now a mascot for corporations. Look at all these decals on my costume. That's what they all become. Like, Bernie Sanders is a mascot for for Medicare for All and all of the big democratic socialist ideologies that we all believe in, but then he just goes and lines up with the fucking Democratic Party anyway. Who is the party with a bunch of fucking corporate stickers all over their fucking suits? He's like, I'm not going to wear this... I'm not going to wear the stickers. I'm not going to, but Donald Trump, he's got to go. But these guys, I'm going to, even though they fuck me over, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. It's fine. Just, well, bad, 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 bad. It's like, fuck you, dude. Chris had just talked about it in Activism Munich, and I, and I threw the clip into one of my videos about the electoral politics. Haven't checked that out. Go check it out on the channel. Um, but he basically pointed out how Shama Savant called him out as to why he won't run on a third party or why he won't run on a, uh, you know, some, some kind of a, di- a different, um, uh, outside the Democratic Party. And Sanders basically said, well, he doesn't want to do it because he doesn't want to be Ralph Nader. He doesn't want to be a pariah. He wants to be liked by the Democratic Party. I mean, how much abuse does one dude fucking need to take from this party? It's just like, like Bernie's just kind of, sit, you know, I love the dude, but he's just sitting there going, thank you, may I have another over and over again. It's just like, man, you got to you gotta get out of this abusive relationship you have with the Democratic Party. They're not good for you. That's, that's kind of what it feels like. It feels like Bernie's in an abusive relationship with the Democratic Party. I mean, we all are. We're all in an abusive relationship with, the, with, with this corporate duopoly, with this oligarchy that we're in. What is so exciting about this? <laughs> and you know what the sad part is? I've asked a bunch of people to like give me like liberals and Democrats that fucking chastise me for going after the going after the the party, and I go, okay, well, give me give me a reason. You 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 know what I stand for. If you if you've watched my videos, if you've kept up with my content, then you know what I stand for. You know what issues are important to me. You know what ideologies I stand by. Why should I vote for the Democratic Party? Which one of these ideologies did they stand by and have actually legislated towards? They've actually put and fought within Congress against Republican opposition instead of just turning over and showing their belly. Which, which one? What should I be excited about within the Democratic Party? And you know what the sad part is? They can't fucking give me an answer. They've never been able to give me an answer. And I keep asking people, right? I'm just like, well, give me something to vote for. That's my qualification. You know what I believe in. Tell me what, tell me what I'm voting for. When I, when, if, I, if, I, if I choose to vote for Joe Biden, what am I voting for? What's exciting about Joe Biden? Where's the enthusiasm for Joe Biden? What's up? And they got fucking nothing. Not one. I'm I've months now, months now. I've been asking. Anytime I get fucking hit by the 
by by uh, Democratic Party fucking staunch Democrats and liberals that are that are just like Trump 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 which ironically there's a Trump 2020 sign right in front of me oh fuck <laughs> they can't give me a, they can't give me a straight answer uh, and that's because there's nothing to fucking get excited about more of the same hey what's up everybody thank you so much for tuning into this video if you enjoyed this content please make sure you like it please make sure you share it and please make sure you are subscribed to this channel whether you're watching this on the YouTubes whether you're watching this on Facebook or uh, or Rockfin which is the cryptocurrency blockchain platform it's ad free and make sure that content creators get paid for the content that they want to make it's completely uncensored whether you're on any of these channels make sure that you are subscribed and following me for uh, all new video updates there are uh, videos uh, put up on this channel on a weekly basis anywhere from four to six videos every single week uh, they include uh, news commentary. They include sociopolitical com- comedy commentary, uh, rants, uh, current event stuff, interviews, stand-up comedy clips. There's a ton of stuff that's available on this channel. Uh, and if you want to come see one of my live virtual stand-up comedy shows called The Citizen Revolution Live Virtual Stand-Up Comedy Show, you can grab tickets directly off my website at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, while you're there, you can also become a sustaining member to get free tickets to these shows uh, uh, and a bunch of cool other uh, bonus stand-up comedy clips uh, while you're at it. And... Uh, you or you can make a one-time donation as well uh, if if that is something that that you would like to do if the sustaining membership is something that you can do I know we're in tough times right now uh, but if you can that'd be awesome if not that's cool too but the big thing to do is make sure that you are liking it you are sharing this and you are subscribed to the channel till next time thank you so much and we'll see you on the road <laughs>